please just sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Thank you very much. to the difficulties involved in putting together any production in Nigeria, particularly theater, which is still struggling to reinvent itself and reintroduce itself to Nigeria after a lull, we haven't been able to put together as many shows as we would have liked. Um, theater, by, by its very nature, thrives and benefits from extended production runs. But well, this is still not possible in Nigeria. So what you've had is you, you have three productions of Olurumbi um, this month. We'll come back a few months later, do a second production, and we've increased the number of productions so far, but if we had the opportunity of having one extended run, let's say for a couple of months, every weekend, then we'll have kept the same standards of excellence throughout and we'll have done all the experimenting that's taken us three different adult runs to do in one run. to the script, went back to some earlier drafts and put back in because the, danger, the fear had been that it was too long. So scenes were dropped to try to make it shorter and we don't lose your audience. I said, no, look, if your drama is strong, your music is fantastic, your costumes, your scenery, is, your audience will sit through it because they will not realize that time is passing. So don't lose out on your drama because you're trying to make it shorter. So we went back to it for the second time around, put more scenes, some of the scenes that had been dropped, we put it back in because they, they helped to center the drama a little bit more. So they got put back in, right? So that was for the second one. So when we wanted to come back to the third one again, because something else that we always do, we try to get feedback from our audience. What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? What didn't you understand? What do you think we could have done to make it even more engaging and from those feedbacks that we get from the audience from feedback that even the producer who it's his baby you know would see from even from us directors as well because sometimes when you've done it for so long you know you, you worked on this for like two months you get blinkered so like after the show you can actually sit back you know and look at it objectively and say okay you know what if we had this extra bit you know it will add to it it will enhance it if we did this it could enhance it It's been a long one, a long journey, but a rather interesting one because it's a rather ambitious project um, and we've had to work from scratch. But it's, you, you can actually, it, it's, a, it's been a fulfilling one because it, today you can look back and actually see how much we've grown as an ensemble and how much the production itself has evolved, you know, striving for perfection. So it's been very long sometimes tiring but very fulfilling. My name is Shion Kentebe, and I'm playing a character named Arakunri. Well, it's, it's, been, it's been a tremendous journey, um, especially with the upgrade, which was unprecedented. Uh, when we were called back, I just thought, okay, we're going to reprise our initial roles until we you know, ended up doing the re-auditioning. And then you know, I got called, and I was like, okay, you're going to play this part. And I, I thought it was just joking, really, till I saw it in the contract and all that. And, it's, it's been nice, you know, the, the exposure, the experience, 
the um, directorial approaches, you know, it's like reading a book over and over again and seeing new things. You know, there's that, there's that progression and, you know, it's, it's something, it's wholesome, it's, it's a lovely experience and it's something it's great being a part of. My name is Falake Mikale Jai, stage name Mist, M-Y-S-T. I am playing Tokme, one of the chipmunks, <laughs> as they are called, and the best friends and minders of the Princess Abike, daughter of Olurumbi. And I am Odun Siolua Tomisi. My stage name is Tomi. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm playing um, Okwe. Okwe is the oldest of all the, the chipmunks. chipmunks. Well, it has been fun all the way, and we've had a lot of challenges, but you know, it has worked out for our good. But then this is different because I'm playing a different role. Well, I was Shokwe, the youngest and the silliest among the chipmunks. The last time, yes. Last time, at those times I played. But now I'm playing Okwe, the oldest. So. It's it was a bit challenging, but now I'm fully in my character and I'm staying there. Yeah, it shows maturity now. <laughs> She's grown with the project, yes. It's yeah. been good. If you pass sick with all the power, your food can make you sick. Have you eaten the cow's egg? All this one is not my business. When you reach sick with all the power, they can no go across. Drop something for a year, but that other way, you quit lost. At the other side of the river, look around for the nearest tree. Not halfway to the top. Yeah, it's been splendid, as a matter of uh, fact, quite frankly. You know, it's different when you're working with experienced artists. But in a situation whereby you're working with uh, green horns, let me put it that way, they're just coming on. You have to exercise enough patience. Well, fine. We have the kind of director who is understanding, the kind of director who really understands the kind of cast he's working with, that they are just coming up. And <clears throat> he has that patience to work with them. And uh, frankly speaking, right from the start of the rehearsals into the production, it was, let me say, splendid and enjoyable. Okay, my name's Sean Amade. I'm the Wafi Suto. Yeah, my name is Shegun Dada Jago, and I'm playing the Warrior Suto. Ajibade Gwen Emmanuel, and I'm playing the Hausa Suto. Mama Issues. Well, basically, from my perspective, I think that it's been progressively positive. It's been fantastic because um, from the first show to my second and third, there has been progression. From an actor's perspective, I would say that it has been more challenging because basically the audience wants more. When they see the first one, they want more from the next one. When they see the next one, they want more from the next one. So it becomes more challenging and more tasking for you. I am Kemi Lala Akin Doju. Everybody calls me Lala. I'm playing Olori Three, the youngest, most jealous wife of the Oniroko. Yeah, that's me. I'm Chiquita Ezenwa, and I'm playing Abike, the one everyone is here to see and, you know, <laughs> the famous daughter of the famous Olurombi. Well, I actually joined the cast of Olurombi in the first show. We were the original cast members here. And I did the first Olurombi, I did the second Olurombi, and I'm back here again. <laughs> she says the same me as I am. Up and coming singers like Tommy, Mist, um, I always forget this a little bit. We had more cheddar, but unfortunately not with us. And we also had Iwetiola Doll as part of the crew and Bimbo Manuel and um, Lawrence Mifakuli and Alba Bob Manuel, who are well-known names to the TV and music, and, and music and industries. But we also brought in less mainstream friendly, but industry respected artists like Esther, Is Esther Isong, Dakwa Omide, the music, the music designer. And imagine that we met both of them together and we got, I think, the best of both worlds. We have the, we have the, the flamboyance, the spectacle, the first show, 
and we have the drama and the cultural richness of the second show. Um, we also have um, a choir this time, and um, we have a soundtrack which we've, you know, on, we've also introduced with this show, a soundtrack of all the songs that have been done with Olorumbi. So in, in a sense, this has been the, the show evolves and we get closer and closer to what we envision for Olorumbi. And I think this, in terms of the concept, is as close to the, idea, the ultimate destination of Olorumbi as possible. But that will be for the audience to decide. I'm Bimbo Manuel. I'm the director of Olorumbi. Um, I have been fortunate, I guess, uh, to be on this project as director because I have, I've had to take over from uh, the lead director, Wolfgang uh, Bogmanuel, who's had to relocate to uh, Europe and almost to Canada. Um, we've come this far, we've done a couple of months of, uh, of rehearsals going through the breaking downs and we built it up to this point. We're just a couple of weeks away from showtime. We're all holding our breath. Even before we care, you have a king for a father, a loving mother, men lining up to marry you. What more do you want? You cannot fetch all the water from the well with one pot. It will not hold. Save some things for your next lifetime. But it doesn't feel At right. At least you get to choose. What if your father was the one in the position for supplicants? The one looking for a powerful ally? Um, there's an abundance of creative energy out there in young, undiscovered people. It's always a joy to come into contact, contact with them. They challenge you. They keep you on your feet. They remind you that you cannot take, you know, your craft for granted because there, there are a thousand and one people just waiting on the wings to step into your shoes. So it's been rather interesting. This particular group has been very quick to learn, very adaptable, not afraid to do new things and try bigger challenges. So it's been a very refreshing experience and I look forward to working with a few more of them on some other projects in, in the future. Um, I think the challenge with Everybody, especially, would be working in a large cast production. The fact that you need to work with 70 people plus, and everybody is very important. So, and because it's not camera, it's not television, rehearsals are very important, and everybody being present is very important. So, you know, the human factors and all these things, you know, are difficulties that we've had to work through, through the process of production. So that has been my biggest challenge, working with everybody. But then again, it's beautiful because it helps emphasize how important everybody is. Um, when I realized I had to leave, and I'm like, so no, actually, no, before that, because we were supposed to have been another play with Bimbo acting, and then this came up that, you know what, they wanted us to do a little so we had to scrap that all, and I'm like, I can't do this by myself, because one, I'm not going to be around, you know, I was actually supposed to leave at the end of our last production, we had timed it like that, so when this came up, I was like, there's no way, so I'm like, okay, I need to get all the directors in that I could trust. Now, Bimbo's pedigree goes back a long way, even though he's more known as an actor. But I also had heard of him also as a director. And I've worked with Bimbo before as an actor when we did Shylock, and I know how thoroughly he takes his acting. You know, there isn't any detail that is too minute to escape his eagle eye as an actor, you know. So in conversation when we were talking, and we both realized that we were both trained by the same director, Ola Rotimi. 
you know and I was like, so I just said to Hannah I said okay Hannah if he's gonna allow it to me protege just as like I am I have full confidence that he is going to you know do it the way I would because we've both been trained with the same style so you're not going to have a clash of difference because every director has their own style <laughs> I don't know why it's always sneaking out. I wonder. Uh -huh. Yale. Mm, Yale. Do you know what this reminds me of? Uh -huh. What? I know. What? When she first came. Exactly. Uh -huh. See? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Our wife. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 17, 18, 19, What's your money? <laughs> There's a scene in theatre, the director is never, abs is never absent, he's just not physically present. Aoba actually brought in Bimbo Manuel and Olarotimi Fakunle. They're all equal directors, but Aoba had the most knowledge of the show because she'd been with, her, with, um, with, with us on the previous um, Olurumbi in December. And she had been brought in at that time to, to back up the original creative director, Victor Eze Okuchuku, who unfortunately cannot be with us because of other commitments. So, in a sense, Aoba provided the continuity we needed for the show. And Bimbo, well, Bimbo, Bimbo is a director. If people don't know this, but Bimbo, is, Bimbo started out as a director and a presenter before he moved into acting on shows like um, Tin Soul and Checkmate and Ripples. And um, she'd worked um, with Bimbo previously and she knew him and she asked him if he would be interested. He came by, we had a, a very short meeting and he jumped at it. And so I think he's done a very good job of doing a, of merging with Aoba's ideas and also our, our, our third director, Larotimi Fakunle. And with the three of them again, they've handled different, different bits. Aoba handled the initial putting the show together because she only had a, a short period of time. Bimbo basically was the, in, in essence, was the, was the spine of, upon which the show has been built because he served as Aoba's representative and then Fakunle carried it out. So, yeah, this disproves the allegation that too many cooks spoiled the broth. I think many hands make great work. He switched on me. Uh, my director, Bima Manuel, switched on me. He became a monster. Incidentally, I've had a crush on him forever, from his days since Checkmates, and I had always wanted to work with him as an actor. And I've had that opportunity in the recent past, and it's been interesting. I had never... In fact, I didn't know he was a director. I didn't know he had that ability to Lulurumbi. And he switched on me. Well, having said that, um, he's a very detailed director. And because he's such a brilliant actor, he helps you. He, he's more than technical. He can tell you the emotional feel of, a, of, of, a, any, of any given scene. So it's enriched me as an actor. It's, he's given me sleepless nights as a boss. But I've, I think I've grown for the experience. Ooh, I've worked with him as an actor before now. It's my first time working with him as a director. And I must say, it was a totally different ball game. I saw a very new man. I saw somebody who um, would dig into the actor to get something that even you didn't know was there. And most especially, I like his method of communication. Um, a lot of directors may be rash or harsh. You know, he, he has this thing of relating with you like your colleagues. And he gets that way, he, he sees your point and he gets the best out of you. And you know, it's like you're reasoning together. And it, it was, it's been a very, very, very um, enlightening experience working with him. I, I was not um, a part of the first two uh, productions of Uruwambi. And I didn't see them in performance, but I, fortunately, the producer had each one of them recorded on television for, for video, and I've, I've watched it over and over again. And I think, uh, in the first place, we need to acknowledge the the excellent job that was done on both productions by the directors. The first director, I guess, was. Uh, Victor Eze with uh, Awoba. The second one was the same team as well, and um, it was it was it was extremely difficult to to begin to introduce new things 
in the first place because the, the, the job they did starting from zero on the ground floor on this kind of project. So you, you see the color, you see the, the, the size, the, the art of what they presented. That I saw on video, I, I just kept playing it back in my head since I first saw it. How grand it must have looked on stage. Um, so uh, that's where the challenge started from. What to do to begin to take Ulurobi as a project, as a musical, as a dance piece, to another level. Because that was the mandate, the first place that we got from the producer of the show, Ikana Hiwi. I can't believe it's already time for her to marry. They grow up so fast, don't they? Mama, you found that Mama! The challenges are more because unlike TV where you everything you do is just around here, but for stage it's your full body. Every business you do, you have to convey whatever message you're trying to pass across to the last person exactly. on the last seat at the and extreme end. Then again. Without shouting, without exaggerating. It's reloaded. I call it Olurumbi the reloaded version. Um, there's more music, there's more dance, there's more colour, there's more variety. Um, the actors and the singers and the dancers, everybody on this team has been carefully selected. So it's Olurumbi like never before. That's minus the fact that it's live. So each live performance is never like the last one anyway. So and then it's coming at the independence period of Nigeria. So we're very conscious of the season, conscious of the time. And um, it's Olurumbi like never before. All the Olurumbis that we've had in the, in the, in the past, well, I can say they are not uh, as filled up as this. When you talk about total theater, you have everything in this. You know, if you asked me this a year ago, I'd have said, I don't know. But again, in a year, in, in fact, we've had one alone be every quarter. And as long as people want to see it, you'll, you'll get it. It will be different next time around because it's always different. We always tweak it. But it'll always be an alone be as long as I'm alive. As long as it's an Aboriginal Productions, there'll be an alone be. But the people have to, have to speak and spread the word. We, we will only do what people want us to see. If they want another one, we'll give it to them.